Hello lovers, Dr. Maria is here. Today we're revising chapter 7, the atmosphere and the human activities. First thing you need to know is the composition of the atmosphere. It's made of nitrogen, oxygen, water vapor, carbon dioxide, and other gases. You don't have to know the names of these gases. You can just say other gases, okay? Nitrogen is 78%, oxygen is 21%, water vapor is 0.4, and carbon dioxide is 0.04. These are the units or the numbers you have, okay? Don't forget to add the percentage. <clears throat> You'll have to know their importance on Earth, or like, they, what do they do? In the sector of the atmosphere, this is the Earth. We got troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere. You have to remember it as TT, okay? It starts with the T, ends with the T, and got SM in the middle, okay? Troposphere, temperature decreases with height as conduction and convection of heat from the Earth's surface decreases. The top of this layer is called tropopose, so troposphere and then tropopose, stratosphere, stratopose, okay? Mesosphere, mesopose, okay. Then we got stratosphere. In stratosphere, you have your ozone layer, okay? This is an important point to remember. So stratosphere the temperature increases slightly with height temperature inversion happens in stratosphere also it absorbs the incoming ultraviolet radiation and that causes the ozone depletion because ozone is present in the stratosphere mesosphere temperature falls rapidly and there is no dust water vapor or ozone to absorb the short wave radiations thermosphere temperature rises rapidly because of the absorption of ultraviolet radiation by atomic oxygen so you got the troposphere here, tropopose, stratosphere, stratopose, then mesosphere, mesopose, okay? And remember that the ozone layer is present in the stratosphere. The natural greenhouse effect, naturally, the greenhouse gases insulate the earth so that they keep the earth warm, okay? The earth receives incoming shortwave radiations from the sun. Half of this radiation is absorbed. 20% is absorbed by the atmosphere, 30% is reflected back by the clouds. As the Earth's surface warm, outgoing long waves radiation, the infrared rays, are emitted back into the atmosphere. Greenhouse gases absorb some of this radiation and deflect it back into the Earth's surface. Okay? Examples of greenhouse gases, natural and artificial. The natural ones, you know, the greenhouse gases, water vapor, carbon dioxide, the most important one. Ozone, methane, nitrous oxide, if you forgot ozone, it's okay. Mainly carbon dioxide, methane, water vapor, okay? These are the main three. And then comes the nitrous oxides, and then comes the ozone. Artificially, the CFCs. CFCs will cause depletion in the ozone, okay? Which happens at stratosphere. Don't forget that. It's very important. The more the concentration of the greenhouse gases, the more effectively they return radiation back to the Earth. You got your greenhouse gases carbon dioxide, methane, CFCs, nitrous oxides. If you forgot the CFCs, it's okay, but focus on these two and the water vapor as well, okay? Very important. You don't really need to know their contribution or their percentage in the atmosphere, but just read this just in case. Atmospheric pollution and its causes. Acidrain comes from burning of fossil fuels, as you know, because of the sulfur dioxide and the nitrogen oxides, they react with the clouds and then they release acidic rain. That acidic rain, what does it do? It acidifies or causes acidification to water bodies and soil, okay? So the plants won't be able to grow and in both, both mediums, both soil and water. Smog. What is smog? Smog, it's a mixture of fogs and dust, okay? Photochemical smog involves chemical reactions induced by sunlight on certain pollutants. These reactions convert them into harmful substances like ground level or tropospheric ozone, the bad ozone. The bad ozone is the tropospheric one. Okay, then we got the volatile organic compounds, VOCs. Mm. You shouldn't write the abbreviation in the exam, better to write volatile organic compounds, but you can write CFCs in the exam. Chemicals that easily enter the atmosphere as gases mainly from evaporation. The examples on them like methane, 
ammonium nitrate, carbon monoxide. Okay, no carbon monoxide and methane. Temperature inversion. What's temperature inversion? A weather condition when the air temperature increases with altitude rather than decreasing. During the day, the surface is heated due to long wave radiation. In calm and clear nights, the Earth's surface cools very quickly, emitting those radiations, cooling the air above it. At higher altitude, the air does not cool as quickly, so the air becomes warmer than the air below it. This layer of warm air of the inversion layer that disrupts the regular convection currents. So usually convection currents happen. We know that normally warm air settles at the bottom and as we increase the altitude or go higher, cold air is there. But what happens in temperature inversion is that smoke comes insulating layer, okay, preventing the air from circulating in their convection currents as usual. So a sandwich happens. The sandwich is cold air traps warm air between the other cold air layer. Okay. The concentration of smog pollutants increases often in valleys surrounded by steep sided, like an inverted U. Okay. This is um valley and valley and then you got your buildings over here. Okay. Enhanced greenhouse effect. It's created by addition of greenhouse gases to the atmosphere more than the normal due to the human activities and you know like burning, like combustion, like same point, burning and combustion. Um, more heat are attained in the atmosphere, increased temperature of the Earth's surface leading to global warming and climate change. Greenhouse gas, you got carbon dioxide, methane, CFCs, nitrogen oxides, and troposphere ozone. You have to know the human activities that cause each one of them. Layer diffusion, we roughly spoke about this by saying that CFCs contribute in this, so let's see what this paragraph is saying. Ozone layer protects the Earth from sun's harmful radiation formed when oxygen filters from the top oxygen too, okay? Oxygen filters from the top of the troposphere and reacts under the influence of ultraviolet radiation to form ozone, which is O3. It's continually formed, destroyed, and replaced naturally, creating a dynamic balance that is distributed by human activities. When CFCs reach the stratosphere, the ultraviolet radiation breaks them down, releasing chlorine. <laughs> chlorine reacts with oxygen in a destructive process, breaking down the ozone molecules to chlorine monoxide in oxygen, depleting the layer and forming a hole in it. This hole is also harmful. This hole allows harmful radiation to enter the Earth's atmosphere. Okay, so what pollutants do we have? The impact of atmospheric pollution, like smog, causes irritation of the eye and throat and respiratory diseases. Acid rain, you know, acidification of groundwater and soil. This causes also diarrhea and stomach obsession. Acidification of groundwater damages the root, the crop yield is declined because of the acidification of soil. Okay, which affects the nutrient retention and the uptake of nutrients by the plant. Ozone depletion is the higher levels of ultraviolet radiations. They cause burns, skin cancers, and cataracts. Climate change is like melting of ice glaciers and ice sheets, and that will cause increase in sea levels and cause floodings. Managing atmospheric pollution. Reduction of carbon footprint. Carbon footprint is a measure of the impact of our activities in the environment, like keeping track of how many carbons you release by your, by your appliances that you get, by the burning, by the combustion, okay? Reduced use of soil, reduced use of fossil fuels. Low sulfur coal can be used, increase in renewable resources. Energy efficiency, using more energy efficient appliances, carbon capture and storage, waste carbon dioxide from power station can be stored via pipelines to storage sites. Transport policies, they take care of the bus lanes, the metro systems, anything that will cause sharing of cars or carpooling. International agreements and policies, why did we say international? Because when you say international agreement or global agreement, you have to say that there is no atmospheric borders, so the air keeps on moving from one country to another, so international cooperation is required in order to make a difference or a change globally. CFCs replacement, reduction of use of CFCs, and CFCs come from ACs and refrigerators, so make them more energy efficient and better, okay? Save disposal of items containing CFCs like refrigerators and ACs. Taxations, 
higher row tax to decrease car ownership, catalytic converters, catalytic converters in vehicle to reduce sulfur dioxide emissions, flow gas desulfurization, there are scrubbers that are used to remove 95% of sulfur dioxide emissions and they line the chimneys, okay? What's the difference between reforestation and afforestation? Reforestation is replanting. So you got to your land and they had already trees before you cut them or you, before you remove them, okay? And then after they're cleared out, a couple of months later, you replanted that land, okay? So that's cool. that is reforestation. Afforestation, it's, you, it's the moment where you plant trees for the very first time on that land, okay? That's called afforestation. Okay, guys, that was it for chapter 7 revision. I hope it was sufficient. If you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to me on my Telegram. Link in the description. And thank you all for watching.